With all due respect to America, I'm very disappointed. Let's break up with them, no problem. My civilian death. Drop a bomb from the air, we'd be done. I think that our dependency on America is horrible. It's horrible. Now, just you can't just break up with America because then we got a black sea and it's terrifying, right? But we got to make a move. You grew up in the U.S. You arrived here. You said it was a third world country. Is Israel part of the West? How do you define the West? Are we talking geograph geographically? Are we talking culturally? Are we talking socially? Are we talking obviously from a materialistic perspective, technologically, obviously we're part of the West, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we're a liberal democracy. Obviously, we're part of the West. Only democracy in the Middle East, you know, only country in the Middle East that has diversity and has acceptance of whatever, LGBTQ, and you know. So from that perspective, of course, I'm the West. But I, I mean, geographically, it's the Middle East. So I guess that depends on your definition of the West. The reason I ask the question as well is because I, I, I look at it from a values perspective and from a civilizational perspective, I definitely think Israel is part of the West. There is no Christendom without Judaism. The, the values that have shaped the West have, have come from, from Judaism and they've come from Christendom. To me, the conflict is very much part of the battle of ideas that we have in the West. And it, it's inextricably linked. And I'm very disappointed by how few people have been standing up, especially given the mass protests that we're seeing across the West in favor of Palestine, if not openly in favor of Hamas. And certainly in favor, openly in favor of the Houthis. So this is this is what I'm what I'm getting at is so, so tell me about this breakup with America that you you would like to see. It's a fantasy, right? Because obviously we depend on them militarily and economically, and they support us. And I don't know what we would do without American funding to to, to fund you know the Iron Dome. Right? Every one of those Iron Domes is like I don't know twenty to fifty thousand dollars each one. We've fired tens of thousands. It's big money. Uh, so it's not like we could just say, okay, let's break up with them, no problem. We are dependent on Why do you want to break up with them? But at the end of the day, Israel, throughout the Jewish people, throughout our history, we were always at the mercy of someone else. Do this, don't do this, go to the gas chamber. Today we're home, and we need to defend ourselves because no one else will. We, we, we've seen it, you know, with all due respect to America. By the way, I don't say that with sarcasm. I have a tremendous amount of gratitude to America. I grew up there, and they were great to my family. But we know when push comes to shove, they didn't let Jews in in the Holocaust. And so... Yeah, uh, they didn't. Right. So I, I think I thank Biden for the support that he's given us, and I hope it continues. But when Biden comes to the war cabinet of Israel and says, cease fire, when after October 7th happened, and we are 100% defending ourselves and doing an extraordinary amount to minimize civilian deaths. In fact, one might say we've done too much because we're risking our own soldiers. Otherwise, you know, irony of it all, right? We're committing genocide. If we were committing genocide, there wouldn't be one dead Israeli soldier. We'd drop a bomb from the air, we'd be done. Flatten Gaza, right? But we don't do that because we're not committing genocide. So, you know, the bottom line is, I think that Israel has to somehow gain its independence in that it can make the decisions that is best for its own people and its own country and not be dependent, you know? Why are we not... Why are we playing a game with Hezbollah? They're fighting, we're firing, we're fighting. Like, what is that? Let's wipe them out. What, what are we playing around for? Well, America doesn't let us open war with Hezbollah. We, want to, we gotta get rid of them, but America won't let us, right? So it's, it's, a, it's a little bit of a, um, an abusive relationship. You know, it's, I think we have to break up. I don't know what that means, and I don't know how it's gonna work, but, and again, that's why I say it's a fantasy. It's not something that's practical tomorrow, but ideologically, you know, ideally, to me, a world in which Israel um, stands alone not in a negative way, in a positive way. You know, we have our we have our allies, and that relationship manifests in different ways. But for America to dictate what we need to do after we were massacred and raped and butchered the way we were is preposterous, and it's 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 really pathetic. It really is pathetic that they have the audacity to to tell Israel what to do after that. You know, how many nine eleven is the equivalent, right? Per cap, no one told America what to do after nine eleven. You know, what are you coming and telling us what to do? They look what they did. Do you also feel that there is the, the, the West, West, the Western world? I, I know that it's a broad concept when I'm talking about the European countries and America and Canada and, and Australia and New Zealand, broadly speaking, they, they don't understand the position that Israel is in because Israelis refer to this region of the world as their neighborhood, which is a, it's an interesting word. And I, I've heard a lot of people said, oh, it's, we're in a tough neighborhood, we're in a difficult neighborhood. Um, Look, a Frenchman who's surrounded by, by Germany, by Spain, by Belgium, he's not surrounded by Egypt, Syria, Lebanon. Is there a deep sort of misunderstanding 100%. between the two, these two worlds? 100%. I think the most fundamental mistake that we're making, we as in the Western world uh, are making with this war is that we are taking our values mm. and we're applying them to radical Islam, you know, an ideology that does not share those values. So, you know, let's say a core value of ours is you treat someone with dignity and respect, they'll treat you with dignity and respect. That is just a core fundamental value of the West. 
That's not how radical Islam thinks. They don't think that. You can treat me with all the respect in the world. You're an infidel, and therefore I'm going to behead you. That's how they think. And so we need to stop applying our values to them. It just doesn't work. It's not copy-paste.